a gaps in understanding for the homosexual squatter. So the homosexual squatter does not know how to do the following, which is pursue emotional self-regulation, create an opportunity for self-sufficiency, wean from a primary caregiver, respect authority, comply with instruction, maintain consistency, sustain stability. So these are the people that will, will eventually blow up on you. Like if you keep trying to get them to see something right and they don't want to see it. And, uh, and all that basically is, is that they just don't want to see it. They don't care. They don't care how you try to outline it for them, put it in a video lesson, write it on a whiteboard, give them some, uh, some index cards, write down an outline, write a whole essay on the cockamamie thing. They don't care. And so a lot of them have, I think, spirits on them that create uh, a very toxic situation, very violent situation that they're going to blow up. And so a lot of times they blow up and the goal is still not to blow up for you to kick them out. The goal is for them to not be homeless. So they look at blowing up as a way to capture you. Because remember, this is about territorial dominance. So they look at a way about capturing you and distracting you at the same time. Because if you're mad at each other, you both go to your separate corners and then you mad in a room, he's mad in a room, uh, uh, you're cussing, he cussing, he's cussing, and you're doing another thing. And then some hours pass by and one of you comes out of the room and then the, and then the other person, here's the other person coming out of the room. He, uh, he comes out of the room and you kind of look at each other and then uh, and then you kind of go in silence while you're still in silence and he's playing video games and then you go back and you watch TV and then by the end of the night or, or the morning, you've already had sex again. You've already had sex again. There's no way around. You've already had sex again. And so that's the goal. So there will be times when the person will self-regulate purposely not because they have great emotional self-regulation because if you had great emotional self-regulation you would have your own job and have your own place the fact that they 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 have to live with you and they don't have a job and don't have a place tells you right there that they don't have good emotional self-regulation because they can't stay on a job or they refuse to stay on a job and it can be a situation where the job is a good job i had an ex who got good jobs he got good job, jobs I could not get, and I have a degree. I have two degrees, and he and he got good jobs with good brand name companies, things like that. I couldn't even get those jobs. He would get on those jobs and go good, maybe for the probation period, I guess. And then somewhere he would start acting up with the supervisor. He would start acting up with the people around him. He would just have this real uh, mean, silly honorary attitude just out of nowhere it didn't even make any sense for him to have that attitude and so what that suggested to me when i began to look at the pattern of what he was doing was he was trying to get fired so then what he would do would uh he would um create a situation where he's having a problem with the supervisor then he has to go to hr and talk about it with hr and he would write these long letters to hr and then um, come out of HR, and then he has to return to work. And then uh, in one situation, he created the circumstances for him to have an uh, accident, an accident on the job. So then that prolongs his stay there, even though he don't want to stay there. He's becoming almost like a homosexual squatter, even on the job. And uh, and so then he would go to the hospital and, um, you know, get it on record that he has a... a an issue due to an accident. So then, you know, jobs can't really force you to quit too much after that. He may have to do some workman's comp or something like that. And so then eventually, eventually he will uh, create the situation where he no longer has a job. And this will go on. And I didn't realize what he was doing because when the homosexual squatter comes and talks to you about these things, I'm telling you, they sound so sincere. They sound like people are really doing them wrong and that that you got to take up the mantle to fight for some justice situation for them. 
and 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 we got to go out there and march and help him because because the supervisor is doing him wrong and and if the supervisor would just leave him alone he would he could do his job the problem is he never intended to do the job he never intended to stay on the job he never intended to do the job well my situation he was a homosexual uh, squatter uh homosexual in my uh house that i permitted and uh and he didn't necessarily turn into a squatter because i went on ahead and let go of the situation it took two years and eight months but i went on ahead and let it go and in some ways he wasn't even uh like a vagabond and um emotional squatter but for legal purposes um i went on ahead and let him go what happened with him the only reason why that he would go get a job was because he was trying to improve he was trying to impress the ex who wouldn't let him know where she lived so she kicked him out of his place they broke up or semi broke up i come on the scene i thought he i think he's not with someone uh and then she finds out about us later and so she starts to mess with the relationship and um and so she gives him him demands that i don't know about and it's not until I reflected on the situation, realizing that, okay, he would get the job and then he would lose it on purpose. He would get the job and lose it on purpose. Get the job and lose it on purpose. And I said, why is he doing that? Because I realized later that he was only getting the job just to uh, show her, okay, I'm really doing something with my life. Look, I got the job. I'm on this job. Okay. And then she'll tell him to stay on the job and things like that. Probably give him some probably give her some money that he wasn't giving me and um 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 and that situation went on for a while until i realized what was going on that they were both playing me once i realized that they were both playing me because i played myself into believing i played myself in believing that i could help somebody who 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 i thought needed help that's how i played myself then i then he played me and uh and uh selling me this idea that that he really wanted to be with me that it's all about me and we're and we're working together and then she played him in a sense that if you do all these different things okay i'll take you back but in reality they were both playing me they were both playing me because she never intended to take him back because she never uh told him where she lived and he never intended to stay with me because he was always still so tied to her and he had always planned to go and live with her even though she never told him where he lived or where she lived so they don't know how to pr pursue emotional self-regulation emotional self-regulation in that situation would have been for him to realize that she's playing games and that he needs to make a decision about her being a jezebel in his life the emotional self-regulation for me was the was the decision that i eventually made in kicking him out for good i never let him come back and it's been what five or six years now i never let him come back and so that was the emotional self-regulation for me they know they they don't know how to create an opportunity for self-sufficiency meaning that they don't here it is there's an opportunity for self-sufficiency the fact that you are an adult you know that you are an adult it's time to go get a job stay on the job keep it then use it to get the place they won't take any job okay sometimes say for instance you 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 give them the benefit of the doubt okay you're like 30 years old uh 40 years old and you don't want to go work work for mcdonald's right and it could be a number of reasons maybe it could be embarrassment maybe it could be it'll be too much on your body uh, because you are much much older okay then go get a job in a warehouse go get a job at walmart go get a job at a at another type of place but go get a job like i said he would go get a job but he would never keep it on purpose so that means he's not creating an opportunity for self-sufficiency because he's moving from job to job and you usually need to stay on a job for at least a minimum of two years and then you reassess with that job if you want to stay there for the next uh three years to total five but if you're moving from place to place and it's not a temporary staffing uh type situation you're not self-sufficient you get a little money here okay and then that gives you a little bit of uh, uh um option to go buy some things that you want to do in other words you're still acting like a kid like you're still living in your parents house you're still living in your parents house 
giving your mother or father a little bit of money, right, towards something, and then you go and spend all the rest, okay, while you are an adult doing that, okay, so at some time, at some point in your life, you're going to have to force yourself into accepting an opportunity for self-sufficiency, so that means if you had to go live with somebody because of a situation, that is an opportunity for self-sufficiency, you're still homeless in the situation, do keep that in mind. You're still homeless in a situation because it's not your place. You're not on the lease. You're not on the mortgage. You're not on the deed. But it's an opportunity for self-sufficiency. Sit that person down. Let's talk. Okay, here's the situation. Can I give you $300? I can save for a place. If I give you too much, it'll be hard for me to save for a place at least. And, and if the goal is for me to leave, okay, and get my own place, then can I give you this? $250, 300 and then I can uh, work and probably get what I need to get and save money uh, for about six months, six to eight months, maybe six to nine. Would you be willing to work for me? And I can contribute few food. Okay, now you are creating an opportunity for self-sufficiency. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some transition time. It's going to take a process, but you are creating the opportunity. What happens is, though, they, they struggle to wean from a primary caregiver. So the primary caregiver in their in their childhood uh, uh, life uh, was a mother or father or an aunt or a big mama or um, if they were adopted or something like that or could have been a family member. Like if their parents died and the sister or brother took up the mantle to uh, try to raise all the kids. OK, that's a primary caregiver. What happens with homosexual squatters, though, they try to treat the woman that they're with as almost a primary caregiver, really actually as a primary caregiver, because the woman already initiates all those types of qualities of primary caregiving. She becomes a mother without realizing that she's becoming a mother in the situation. And men will say, well, she's operating in her masculine, trying to take over the role of a man. Well, the man is not doing anything. The man is not doing it. He's not getting a job. He's not keeping a job. He's not doing anything. So then, like most women, we're going to do whatever we got to do to get the situation uh, handled, to, to get the job done. But the problem with that is, is that you you have changed your role from romantic partner to now primary caregiver. Because if he doesn't have a job, he, don't, he can't get his own place. If he can't get his own place, then he's living with you. If he's living with you, he's basically homeless. Because like I said, at any time you could decide to kick him out. Women usually don't kick them out, though. It usually takes us. It took me two years and eight months to kick kick him out. Because a lot of times we feel bad for the situation. We don't want them out there by themselves. Uh, we don't want them uh, hurt, harm, harm, and in danger. They could run into somebody. Of course, we don't want them with somebody else like another girl or something like that but all those qualities are parenting qualities not romantic relationship building qualities so if they have already uh, been struggling with weaning from a primary caregiver who was actually a blood relate related primary caregiver and to now transitioning to you it's hard to get them out of that mindset it's hard to get them out of that mindset. They want to be in that mindset. They want to be coddled. It's like the movie Baby Boy. They want to be in the womb. And they want to be able to take from the womb. They want to be able to take resources or whatever. When you think about the situation uh, with the male uh, character, he just moved from women to women. When one didn't work out and, and, and he put a child in her, and then they ended up having a child too, uh, uh, he just moved to the other woman who he had a child with, who he lived with, right? And then when that didn't work, he moved to another woman. He just moved. He was a homosexual squatter. He just moved from person to person, person to person, because he was looking for the primary caregiver. The mother uh, likely had him young, so she didn't have the uh, maternal uh, faculty. So then their grandmother, her mother, which was... Um, or, or big mama, she took care of him while the daughter was still in the house or while the daughter was running around or, 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 or something like that, right? So that's who he got used to. So he's just moving from his mama to the baby mamas 
to anybody else who will be a primary caregiver. So then you would think that if they can't wean from a primary caregiver, that they would respect authority and instruction. No. Uh, a, a lot of times they they have a problem with the ideal of the caregiver giving to them. Men really don't like you helping them. That doesn't mean they won't take the help, but they really don't like you helping them. Uh, pay attention to people who come up as celebrities, especially men. Um, a lot of times what they'll do is that they'll let that wife who they're coming up with help them, help them get their dream off the uh, um, um, on track, things like that. But when they finally make it, they drop that woman. And they marry a woman who did nothing for them. Look at any situation, celebrity, billionaire, businessman, any situation. They always marry the woman who did nothing for them. And so for a long time, then you have to wonder, were they a homosexual squatter in that marriage? In the marriage. They were married. They both had a place. They both were helping him work towards his dream and work uh, uh, and everything. But as soon as he made it and he got money, he went on ahead and left. And so they don't respect authority, meaning in this situation, the marriage would be the authority. The marriage should be good just uh, when, it's, uh, when we don't have a lot of money and when we do have a lot of money. Why are you now exiting the marriage just because you have a lot of money? Okay. They don't comply with instruction. Like the situation I told you, he always created a situation where he had to get fired. And the instructions can be very clear. Go work on this, this side of the, of, of, of the department. Go meet that need or go, go do this, go do this report or whatever. And they don't want to comply with instruction because when you comply with the instruction, you actually advance. If you think about the platoon leader, when the platoon leader says forward march, if you stay in place, you are going to become stagnant after a while. You are, are disrespecting instruction. But when you when he says forward march and you march, just by visual alone, you are advancing one foot in front of the other. But they don't want to comply with instruction because they don't want to put one foot in front of the other. Because if they advance, then they would have to take responsibility. Then they have to be accountable. Then they have to accept the truth about themselves, that they are grown people. They can't lie to anybody anymore. And people like their conveniences. They would rather, rather not take responsibility, not take accountability, resist the truth, and lie to themselves. So then it's hard for them to maintain consistency and to sustain stability because sustain, maintaining consistency and, stay, and sustaining stability uh, keeps you on a, a very uh, narrow path. Broad, narrow is the way. Broad, people like to go the broad way. That's why they like to do all these twists and turns. They go and uh, sell their houses to go in RV. Here it is, they are 60, 70 years old when they should be in retirement. And they would rather go and, and roam the countryside because they wanted to do that when they were in their 20s. But then they realized when they get to 75 that they shouldn't have done that. That they were already in a stable situation and you didn't necessarily have to sell your house. You could just go on vacation. You can go on vacation. So now they're going to end up having to become homosexual and homosexual squatters in their family lives, right? Or they may have to live in their RV at an RV park or something like that. So they don't know how to sustain stability. Now, if they've all, if they had multiple opportunities to uh, create uh, self-sufficiency and they refuse, it's going to be hard for them to sustain stability or listen to you about sustaining stability because they don't respect it. So in other words, not only do they not respect authority, they don't respect emotional self-regulation. They don't respect self-sufficiency. They don't respect the primary caregiver. They don't respect instruction, consistency, stability. So if they don't have respect for it and honor for it, nothing that you say is going to help them to understand how important it is.